Hey YouTube, how's it going? Yak Science here with another OCHEM video. Today we're going to be talking about reactions with alcohols. Okay, it's a huge, huge, huge uh, category, but I'm going to try my best to uh, fit everything in that you'll likely need to know uh, for OCHEM in one video. If not, we'll switch to two part. Okay, so let's just dive in. Here's an alcohol, right? And we would call this a primary alcohol because it's attached to a carbon that's primary. This carbon has only one R group attached to it, one other carbon group attached to it, so this is a primary alcohol. Now, when we look at this alcohol, is this a good leaving group? No, it's a terrible leaving group, and back when we did SN2, we couldn't do SN2 reactions on something like this, right? Because this would not leave. Um, is this a good nucleophile? No, right? It's perfectly happy right here. It's not gonna be willing to share more electrons and form a third bond or something like that. Okay, so long story short, Alcohols are typically very happy the way they are, uh, and we have to do something to them if we want to get them to react. So we can do two things to an alcohol in order to open up the door to the millions of different reactions uh, that they're capable of. One is to make this alcohol into a good nucleophile, and we'll talk about how. And the second method that you're, you'll need to know in your OCHEM course is we can make this into a good leaving group, okay? So two methods, good nucleophile and good leaving group. Let's talk about the first one. If we wanted to make this a good nucleophile, what could we do? Well, we could use something to deprotonate that hydrogen, right? So let's say we use some NaOH, right? And we'd have some OH minus. It would grab that hydrogen, send the electrons over to oxygen. And now we have oxygen with a minus charge. That's a great nucleophile right there. But what's the problem? The problem is this. This has a very, very uh, significant equilibrium. So this product won't be in such high yield. It'll go back and forth. If we want to really isolate this good nucleophile, we need a different method. So that different method will come in the form of NaH. NaH, right? Sodium hydride. Back in the hydride reduction video, we talked about lithium aluminum hydride and uh, sodium borohydride, those are sources of hydride that can act as a nucleophile. NaH is a source of hydride that acts as a base only, okay? So NaH will not attack, right? It'll just deprotonate this hydrogen. Okay, so let's see what happens. Okay, when we put this in the presence of NaH, sodium hydride, and we need, by the way, a polar aprotic solvent, because this is a very reactive species, kind of like Grignard. If you put it in a polar protic solvent, the dish is going to explode in your face. Okay, so you want um, polar aprotic. So for instance, DMSO, right, dimethyl sulfoxide. Um, that's a very common uh, one to put with NaH. So what's going to happen is you get this hydride, right? It'll grab the hydrogen, shoot those electrons over to oxygen, and now we have two products. We have our new nucleophile, right? We made an alcohol into a good nucleophile and we made hydrogen gas, H2, okay? So that's how NaH works and we're gonna be using it a lot. You're gonna be using it a lot in uh, OCHEM. So let's see an example of uh, using NaH uh, in a problem. So let's say we have uh, methoxide, right? As of now, uh, it's very stable. Sorry about that. It's very stable um, and unreactive, so we have to do something to it to make it reactive. So, sorry, that's a hydrogen, my bad. So we're going to react it with first NaH and DMSO, right, as a solvent. And second, we're going to introduce an alkyl halide. Let's see what happens. First step, NaH will deprotonate this hydrogen. Okay, it'll grab that hydrogen, shoot the electrons over to oxygen double arrows because it's acid-base chemistry. So now what we just did is we made a good nucleophile. Oxygen with a full negative charge. So now what could this do? It's gonna attack that alkyl halide in an SN2 reaction. Right, that's an electrophilic carbon going back to SN2. It attacks, backside attack, right? Inversion of stereochem, even though this isn't a stereocenter, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, and now let's just go straight to the products. So what we made is an ether. Right, that oxygen is bonded to one, two, three carbons. 
one, two, three carbons, and that's it. Now I want to talk about the second method for making those really happy alcohols kind of unhappy and reactive. The first method we talked about was making them a good nucleophile, so we're good with that. Let's put some check marks here. We talked about that. Yep, yep. Now let's talk about making uh, an alcohol into a good leaving group, right? We said that an alcohol just like this is a terrible leaving group. Why? Because if it leaves, it's just going to form hydroxide, which is an extremely strong base, right? So that's not going to happen in nature. Um, so we have to do something to it. Uh, for, for the purposes of your class, you'll probably need to know three ways to make an alcohol a good leaving group. Using acid, using PBr3, PCl3, or Pi3, and then using TSCl or tosyl chloride. So let's talk about each of these. How can using acid make an, uh, an alcohol into a good leaving group? The answer is, if it's a strong acid, it'll protonate that oxygen, right? So you'll end up with hydronium, right? Oxygen with that extra hydrogen from the acid. It'll get a plus charge, plus formal charge, and now all of a sudden it's a very good leaving group because if it leaves, it becomes water. So that's the trick for using acid to make this a good leaving group. Let's see an example. Let's take our standard alcohol. It's primary, right? And let's react it with some HBr, right? Hydrobromic acid. So what's going to happen is this. You have your HBr. You'll grab that hydrogen, shoot the electrons over to bromine, and here's what you have. You have hydronium, right? Oxygen with three bonds. Sorry, that's a hydrogen. And this will take a plus charge. Now we have a good leaving group. And what do we have floating around in solution? We have Br minus because it lost its hydrogen. And Br minus, we know, is a good nucleophile. So what's going to happen is this. This carbon is super electrophilic. Bromine's gonna, bromide is going to attack that carbon, shoot off this now good leaving group, and we end up with a product that looks like this. We just made an alkyl halide out of an alcohol. So a couple housekeeping rules uh, for using acid like that. We dealt with a primary alcohol in that example, and that's why everything went smoothly. But the rule is, if you're going to use acid to make hydronium, right, oxygen with three bonds, uh, if it's a primary alcohol, we can go ahead and do SN2. That's fine. Remember, the bro bromide ion attacked adds the hydronium ion left. Um, so that's SN2, conserved, right? But if the alcohol is secondary or tertiary, like let, let's say the problem were a little different. Let's say now there were a methyl group here. All of a sudden, we would have to carry we would have to bring it through an SN1. So same conditions, right? HBr, but now we're dealing with a secondary alcohol. We would first protonate this, right? Then this would leave, form a carbocation. You have to consider rearrangement as well. It would have to undergo SN1 or E1 for secondary or tertiary. That applies to acid. Another uh, housekeeping rule for acids, uh, you can use HBr, HCl, or HI. You cannot use HF. Okay, so HCl, HBr, and HI could be used to make an alcohol into a good leaving group and then attack with uh, the, f the formed ion, right, the bromide or the chloride or the iodide uh, via SN1 or SN2, depending on whether it's a secondary, tertiary, or primary alcohol. Now let's talk about another method for making uh, an alcohol into a good leaving group. Now for this method, these rules will not apply. And that's why this method is typically preferred in labs, you know, in real life. That is using PBr3, PCl3, and Pi3. Okay, let's see how that works. So let's take a secondary alcohol. Right, it's secondary because this carbon that's attached to the alcohol group has uh, two other carbon groups attached to it. And let's react it with PBr3 in CH2Cl2 solvent. That's the solvent that you use for these guys, for PBr3, PCl3, Pi3, something you gotta memorize. So here's how this works. We have PBr3, the oxygen's gonna attack that phosphate, 
And as that happens, one BR, doesn't matter which one, will leave. So where does that leave us? We're going to have, once again, oxygen with three bonds, right? We have the hydrogen. And now we have PBR2, right? Because one of those bromines left. We have a positive formal charge on the oxygen. And now we have bromide ion hanging around in solution. So there he is in all his glory. He's going to attack the electrophilic carbon, kick this guy out because now it's a good leaving group. Here it was a terrible leaving group. That's the whole point of this. And we made once again an alkyl halide. Okay, perfect. So remember with, when we're using PBR3, PCL3, PI3, pr primary or secondary um, can undergo SN2. For alcohol, for using acid on the alcohol, uh, only primary can undergo SN2. And finally, one last way we can make an alcohol into a good leaving group or having a good leaving group at the OH end is using TC, TSCL or tosyl chloride. So here's how that works. So let's take an alcohol and we're going to react it with tosyl chloride. TSCL, that's like the shorthand for it. And the, the, the solvent, unfortunately, you have to memorize, it's called pyridine or py pyridine. Not really sure how to pronounce that. It looks like this. Okay. And once you do this, right, magically, I don't think you have to know the mechanism. So for now, let's just say magically, uh, pops out an OTS. Right? And remember we talked about OTS, tosylate, uh, as being one of the best leaving groups you'll ever encounter in OCHEM. So once we do this, there's millions of different reactions we could do to this because this is such a good leaving group. So this is a very, very powerful tool when we want to make things, right? We can attack anything, but we can have anything attack this, right? And this will leave essentially. So millions of different possibilities when we make alcohols good leaving groups or when we make alcohols good nucleophiles. So that's reactions with alcohols, and I really hope you gained something from that. Thanks for watching.